Did you know that the Wright brothers' flight in 1903 covered just 120 feet, shorter than the wingspan of a modern Boeing 747? That's right, short but revolutionary. Airplanes have connected us across continents, making the world seem smaller and enabling us to explore places we never thought possible. In this video, we will take you on an express journey through the fascinating evolution of airplanes. You'll be amazed at how these incredible machines have transformed our world. So buckle up and stay with us till the end of the video. From kites to gliders, let's travel back in time. It's long, long before someone even tries to invent a flying machine. The birds are in the air and the Chinese have been flying kites for a while. So many people would have thought, hey, if we can figure out how to use the wind, maybe we can fly too. Jump ahead to the 15th century, and you've got Leonardo da Vinci, who wanted to turn these dreams into reality. He drew pictures of flying machines inspired by birds. But here's the thing, the science back then wasn't quite up to the task. Da Vinci's ideas were super cool, but they couldn't get off the ground because the technology just wasn't there yet. Humans did have big dreams to be able to fly through the air, but they didn't really understand how it all worked. With no fancy books to explain all the physics required, they had to rely on what they saw and lots of trial and error. Some folks even thought that if they flapped their arms fast enough, they could take off like birds. But there was a big problem, gravity. What goes up must come down. So to fly, we need to figure out how to beat the pull of the earth. Birds have been doing it for ages. They have strong muscles and feathers that help them fly. But humans don't. People experimented with kites and gliders, trying to figure out how to create enough lift to get off the ground. Leonardo da Vinci was fascinated by flying during his youth and even came up with an ornithopter around 1505 a flying machine that flapped its wings like a bird. But, like other flapping wing designs, it wouldn't have worked. Kites were a huge inspiration too. They had to be light and flown at just the right angle to stay up. But if you wanted a kite big enough to carry a person, you had to change things up. Lawrence Hargrave, an explorer and inventor, came up with the box kite in the late 1800s. It was a game changer because it did lift about five meters in the air. During the 1800s, Sir George Cayley, who's also called the grandfather of modern aviation, figured out the four forces of flight, weight, lift, drag, and thrust. He even built the first model airplane and designed gliders that could actually carry people. For over 50 years, he kept tinkering with his gliders changing wing shapes for smoother airflow and adding tails for stability. Cayley also realized that for longer flights, you needed power. He saw that gliders needed engines. So, he laid the groundwork for powered flight. First, stable flight. Now, let's talk about a pivotal moment in the history of flight. In the year 1900, two brothers from Ohio were about to become famous as they traveled from Ohio to Kitty Hawk, North Carolina to begin their first experiments with more aerodynamic and stiffer planes. You guessed right, it was none other than the Wright brothers. On December 17, 1903, history was made. Their aircraft soared in the air and stayed airborne for 12 seconds. In that short span, it covered a distance of 36 meters before gently touching down. This flight went down in history as the first ever controlled powered flight. But the Wright brothers weren't the only ones trying to build a plane. Other enthusiasts around the world were also diving headfirst into aviation experiments. Countries like Chile, New Zealand, and even Canada were catching the flying bug. Soon, humans solved the mysteries of aerodynamics and the behavior of air around objects. This knowledge paved the way for the era of modern aircraft. The beginning of commercial aviation. Before we move on and I tell you about the beginning of commercial aviation, if you haven't already, make sure to hit the subscribe button to watch more amazing videos like this. Also, don't forget to turn on the notification bell so you're the first to know when I post new content. Let's continue. A decade later, in 1914, 
the world saw its very first scheduled commercial passenger flight. Antony Habersack Janus was the pilot, and he took off in a Benwast 14 flying boat of St. Petersburg Tampa Airboat Line, which was the first ever airline from St. Petersburg, heading to Tampa, Florida. The flight lasted 23 minutes, and it wasn't packed full. In fact, it had just one passenger, Abraham C. File, who happened to be the mayor of St. Petersburg at the time. How much do you think a one-way ticket of that flight cost? Five dollars, and if you had any freight, it was five dollars for every 100 pounds. That might sound cheap, but in today's money, that's about 150 dollars. That flight was the first of millions of flights that would take off and land safely later on. And did you know that right now, there are about 100,000 flights every day? That's right, folks. Aviation really changed everything. It made the world smaller because people could fly to faraway places quickly. It helped with trade so we could get things from other countries easier. During wars, planes became super important for fighting. Before, we traveled by slow trains and ships, but planes made it super fast to get around. No more long, tiring journeys. Today's aircrafts, like the Lockheed SR-71 Blackbird used by the U.S. Air Force, can travel at speeds of up to an unbelievable 2,200 miles per hour. That's about 3.2 times the speed of sound. The Boeing 747-8i is the fastest commercial jet in the world, with a cruising speed of 614 miles per hour, and can carry 467 passengers. If we compare modern planes to the Benwast 14, things have changed quite a lot. While the Benwast 14 was a compact aircraft with limited capacity, today's planes, like the Airbus A380, can carry over 800 passengers. Every aspect of flying has improved, from speed to safety. In fact, flying is considered the safest means of transportation, although there have been plane crashes here and there. The worst plane crash happened in 1977. Two Boeing 747s collided with each other on the runway on the Spanish island of Tenerife, Canary Islands. 583 people lost their lives in this tragic accident, but still, 6 million people fly somewhere every day. Modern Marvels Cutting-edge navigation systems like GPS and autopilot have revolutionized traveling and greater affordability and accessibility have democratized air travel globally. Flying has also helped companies by making it easy for people to do business and go on vacations. But here's the twist. Planes can be a bit rough on the environment with all their emissions. When jet fuel burns, it produces gases like CO2 and nitrogen oxide. In 2022, aviation was responsible for 2% of the global energy-related CO2 emissions which has grown more in the last decades than rail, road, and shipping. But since humans know how to go around and fix problems, guess what? Airplanes are getting a lot greener and eco-friendlier, making them not so much of a problem for the environment anymore. Big companies like Airbus and Boeing are making super-efficient planes, like the Airbus A350 XWB and Boeing 737 Dreamliner. These planes can travel longer distances on one gallon of fuel than other planes, making aviation eco-friendly. But that's not all. The aviation world is also diving into electric planes. Some are fully electric, while others are a mix of fuel and electricity. In 2019, Etihad Airways even flew a Boeing 787 Dreamliner using a special kind of fuel made from a desert plant called Salicornia. That's like using plant power to fly. Over 170,000 flights have already used biofuels, like flights by Qantas Airways, United Airlines, Virgin Atlantic, and Alaska Airlines. Airbus is working on something even better. They want to make the world's first hydrogen power plane by 2035. But how is this a solution? When hydrogen-powered fuel cells become a common practice in building an aircraft, it will be a true zero solution for greenhouse gas emissions because the only output of hydrogen fuel cells is water vapor. Additionally, hydrogen has a higher energy density than diesel or gasoline, giving hydrogen-powered aircraft greater range and payload capabilities than electric aircraft. 
This technology has been tested successfully, and we can't wait to see how it changes flying for the better. Are you a fan of flying? Tell us about your best or worst flying experience in the comments below. Press the like button if you like this video and check out our channel for more interesting videos on topics like the evolution of technology, famous brands, and history. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.